Well, it's the show that everyone's talking about on radio talk shows and social media, in offices and around dinner tables across the country. The Tinder Swindler. Yeah, that's Netflix's runaway success of the year so far, clocking 45.8 million hours watched worldwide in its first five days and hitting the top 10 in 92 countries, South Africa included. So the debate and the interest around uh, this uh, lies in the swindling of uh, Simon Lviv, who sparked comments that uh, women should have known better. However, psychiatrist uh, Professor Renata Skumen and head of healthcare leadership at the University of Stellenbosch Business School says that it's not as straightforward as assuming that women were merely gullible. Professor Skumen noted that it's difficult to catch a psychopath in the act. Well, Professor Renata Skuman joins us now to talk to us a little bit more about this. Thank you so much indeed for joining us and welcome to the program. Good evening, Peter. All right, so we're talking about women, but a lot of men have been taken over the years. So in many ways, this debate really doesn't have an agenda. It's more about behavior and how we see things. But Tinder, swind Tinder swindler seems to be what's caught people's eyes at the moment. What are your first impressions about the inverted commas gullibility of some of the women that were taken? I think all of us have a knee-jerk reaction and think, oh, sure, couldn't they see what's going on? It's too good to be true. Shouldn't that have set up some alarm bells? But as you said, through the years, many people have felt victim to different kinds of deceit, whether it's credit card numbers that you share with someone, whether it's your property that you swindled from. So it comes in various ways. And the problem is if there's psychopathic behavior involved, as in this case, there's absolutely premeditated, well-strategized plans and waterproof explanations or seemingly mm. waterproof explanations for the things that don't add up. And when they lure their prey or their victim into this net of deceits and lies and communications that they created, it's very easy for a victim then to start to doubt your own instinct and your own gut mm. feeling. And especially if you can't really share your concerns with a colleague or a friend or a family member. Uh, the people who do the swindling, are they quite careful about the type of person that they go after because some people are more vulnerable than others? Definitely people, they are more vulnerable people. It can be single people, it can be older people. It can also be people that portray yourself in the media as an easy target without even knowing it. You're setting yourself up, I'm looking for love or I'm looking for the, the prince on the yeah. white walls or whatever the case might be. So they will look, but at the same time, they are so overconfident and egocentric that they might so believe in their own ability that they, they sometimes the victim is actually a quite successful, unsuspecting person, not necessarily a gullible woman, as you mentioned. So what are the signs that we miss? Because I'm thinking that, you know, they say if it's too good to be true, then it's probably too good to be true. And yet we get taken by these things. Is it, is it, is it part of our psyche to override that which we probably on another day would have alarm bells going off? Is it ambience? Is it atmosphere? What, what plays in? that we start to, to ignore the flags? Yeah, I think it goes on two sides. If you look at the social brain, we are mm. programmed to trust people. That is the basis mm. of building relationships. So all of us have that capacity to trust people and sometimes we trust the wrong person. But in the terms of the psychopath, they have such clear strategies that it's very, very difficult to expose their deceit, um, especially if you feel you know, you feel embarrassed maybe about it, but there are certain red flags. It's very important, as you mentioned, if it seems to be good to be true, it most likely is too good to be true. If you feel in your gut that something is not right, trust your gut instinct. But then there's also some other telltale signs. If you meet someone and they're all about the materialistic goals they've achieved and flashing their success, 
instead of talking about their goals, their dreams, their mm. journeys, their families, the books that they've read, that's already something that you must doubt or, or have alarm bells about. The other thing is if it's people that you know that it is impulsive or they don't have stable networks of friends or colleagues or families, they're often loners mm. in a way. That must also be something that you are you know, raising your suspicions. And then also when you observe behavior that is very flamboyant, very flashy, and you can't back it up with evidence, um, and also people that can become very, very cross if you do yeah. not fulfill their demands, and they call it a rage, and they might just reject you then if you don't fulfill their needs anymore. Could self-esteem be a factor where you're suffering from self-esteem issues and this person then offers some kind of affirmation or proof that you are beautiful, that you are attractive, that you are worthy? Yes, but it's not necessarily only a self-esteem mm. issue. I think someone with a self-esteem issue are more vulnerable, but all of us like to feel appreciated. We mm. appreciate hearing words of affirmation or deeds of service or seeing that someone is going to a certain extent to, to, to do something for us, to make us feel special. So that's a basic human need again. It doesn't mean that you have poor self-esteem. But yes, if you do struggle with that issues, you might latch on to this behavior more easily. The word psychopath has come up a few times. Um, and I just wonder, what is different about a psychopath that makes it harder for us to track? So from a psychiatric perspective, the correct terminology is an antisocial personality disorder. That's how we diagnose it. But mm. if it then entails all this criminal behavior, we tend to talk about a psychopath. But not all psychopaths has a criminal record and mm. vice versa. But when we look at the definition of a psychopath or antisocial personality disorder, it's people that is purposefully deceitful, they are callous, there's no remorse, they can be impulsive, they have an inflated sense of importance, they, they're manipulative, they are going to extreme extents to create mm. the scripts, to mislead people. We also have people that have characteristics of it, which is what we call the curse of confidence, which we might find in the corporate psychopaths, which are purpose, which is overlapping then with things like the confidence that, and, and maybe the courage to take certain business decisions and the charisma. But once again, many successful people out there that are confident, that have the charisma, doesn't mean mm. there's something pathological about it. The psychopaths really, it's out on a deceitful intent the lack of remorse, the callousness, the lack of forming that good, mm. healthy interpersonal relationships. I mean, there, there are, you know, I, I've watched a little bit of this program and for me, it started to unravel the moment someone who's supposedly rich is asking for money all of a sudden. I mean, that really should be an alarm bell straight away, isn't it? I mean, why would you then keep on giving this person money? I think you must remember that it didn't happen right in the beginning of the relationship. Mm. So at that stage when it started to happen, the, the ladies that was involved, but there's also from, if you followed some of the media, it yeah. seems like there's also been men involved in terms of a friendship, type of trust relationship. Um, they were already treated by this person. They already right. went on these excursions and they already were put in, you know, there was a whole lot of communication going on. So what is portrayed in the movie, maybe as the first moment or in the first week or so, it may be in the relationship was after a couple of months that it started to occur, in the one case after six months only. Mm -hmm. So by then you really established a relationship, even though it was one-sided. And then given the, the identity that it formed in terms of the diamond trade, we're all a little bit scared about yeah. it. We all all know that there might be things involved there or scary elements. And I think that, that played into the script also how that is even portrayed in previous movies in terms of what you believe. It's dangerous, dangerous business. Yeah. So when when the incidents come in the emergency rooms and the accidents and the threats, it could seem quite real if you already formed that attachment with someone that you think you love or that you think loves you. All right, we're talking about women uh, being taken, but I think it happens far more on the other 
uh, uh, side where men are being taken. Um, men put up pictures of beautiful women on social media, start conversations with men, and men just believe that they're speaking to this gorgeous Russian model. Don't think for a second that this is a scam. And before you know what's happening, they're sending money for air tickets and so on and so forth. And I once heard a person say that, you know, if I started a business, I'd only hire beautiful women as salespeople because men find it hard to say no to beautiful women. So is there something about our psyche that, maybe as men even, that um, we just lose the plot with, with certain stereotypes of women, because it's always pictures of beautiful women or beautiful women in real life that come and we just can't say no. I can't help but thinking of the song that I made was in fashion 10 years maybe ago. It's, it's something <laughs> like, if you want to be happy for the rest of your life, never make a pretty woman your wife. <laughs> so it links to that, but again, we're playing into that stereotype of it's yeah. the woman. Um, that's the culprit and the woman that is gullible. But as you said, there's many men that were scammed. There's many guys that make the living from being schemers and other men fall for the schemers mm -hmm. on a friendship level. You know, like you borrow me this, I'll help you to get rich from this or uh, this scheme or that scheme. Yeah. And men are swindled, whether it's out of their cars, whether it's out of their savings, whether you sign security to someone else's loan, it happens all the time it might not make the mainstream mm. media. So generally, we want to trust. That's our basic instinct. And for as long as the swindlers play on that and make everything plausible, it's quite likely we'll go along with these until a huge red flag comes our, our way. Is that how it plays? Yes, I do believe that that's how yeah. we're wired as the human species. Mm. And it will be sad the day when we decide we don't trust anyone anymore, because how will we build a society? How will we build relationships, families, etc.? I think the important thing is just to safeguard yourself. And maybe now, since we have such a lot of online platforms, it became easier for this deceitful behavior because we do not see behavior in context. We don't go to a function anymore or to a family circle or a party where you meet someone or where you have a blind date, so to speak, arranged by a family or friend, but where you actually have some collateral information. All the online dating platforms is very much devoid of context. It's very much devoid of collateral information. And that makes us so much more vulnerable. Oh, dear. This thing called love, Professor Skuman. <laughs> Thank you so, so much indeed for joining us. And uh, yeah, I suppose every once in a while we'll heed the warnings and then we'll fall right into these things again. Thanks so much for your time. My pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. All right, so there you have it. I mean, it is, it's, a, it's an incredible, di incredibly difficult thing to navigate, isn't it? Because on the one hand, your heart wants what it wants. And usually, when you are in love like that, you just miss all the flags. And the flags are there. In retrospect, you look back and you think, you know what? From day one, this guy was a skeleton. We'll have more for you after the...